Value is really is a big deal. I, not, yes, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go as far as to say it's always about creating. There's a lot of brand management that's about maintaining and sustaining value. A lot of this kind of goes into understanding value. So value is kind of this idea of benefits minus cost, right? So how do you kind of look at the, the benefits and costs that might exist for different alternatives and products, right? So it's really getting at kind of the value equation so you can think about consumers and value because that's one of the first things that we talk about in the class, right? But it gets at some of this stuff as well. So how does it kind of tie this value equation on this side, the consumer side, to what we're trying to do in terms of the stimuli, the marketing mix on the right side in the target markets? Do you see how Conjoint helps with that? Okay, and is it, uh, so the relative importance of that attribute in the overall product, is that always going to be the same for every consumer? Okay, so, so, so help me with that. That's the only part I'm missing. You're, you're doing really well, but what, 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 what puts that together? Okay. So you may want, instead of just doing a survey of everyone, you may want to do three different surveys for each segment so you can find the most important for that segment. Okay, that's close, but I want to show you a little bit more in the, on the conjoint side because you, you can say, okay, I'm going to go out and do a different conjoint analysis for different populations. That's usually kind of the way, you know, I'm going to uh, sample the populations of current ticket holders or I'm going to sample the population of prospective ticket holders who don't, you know, who aren't currently buying. So this is sort of focused on the population of, existing ticket holders, right? And so within that population, if I go out and I do a conjoint analysis, how does that, how does that study look? What am I doing when I go out and actually implement it? Like if you, if you guys came in today and you were doing a conjoint analysis, how, how, would, how, would, the, uh, how would the choices or what would I present you with in class, do you think? You would, you would have a number of different options. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, so it's, so it's, different, it's different from perceptions. This is, a, this is kind of a big thing to get. It's, a, it's different from perceptions because perceptual mapping is focused on how do I kind of map out your perceptions and how you feel about uh, different attributes. And it's more about th that choice, right? Uh, which would you choose product A over, or product B, right? And I change those products and I change the mix of those products. I change something about maybe the pricing or some function that one product has that another product doesn't have. I change the seat location in one, right? I uh, change the pricing and the other, and, I'm, and I give you this set of choices so I can kind of go through and get at what am I trying to really understand uh, when, you know, on one person, just one person, what am I trying to get out of all those different exposures and the choices they make? What, what, what am I trying to get out of that? It's very mathematical. What do you think it is? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out that, right? And I'm trying to get at, uh, so I could, what if I just came and I said, here are all the different choices, pick one. Why is that? That's a different task, right, from just doing A or B. Because the customer might not know um, why they like a specific product. So by presenting all the different options, you can find out the three triggers. That okay, that's it. That's spot on, right? So the customer doesn't know. They don't know what their underlying value system is, so they can't, they can't tell you why. If, if I just said pick out of these 25 options, pick the one you like the most, uh, I would know out of those 25 options what, what choice they would make, right? But I don't understand why. So what I'm trying to get at is I'm trying to get at what they value in the choice set, right? What are you, what are you placing more weight on and how are you kind of making that weight? How, how are you kind of revealing your utility? So uh, in a regression, you guys did multiple regression. You've already done statistics, right? So in a regression framework, an easy way to think about conjoint analysis is your dependent variable, you know, your dependent variable Y, is, it's, it's, uh, it's multinomial, right? Uh, so it's, uh, so th these models are also called multinomial uh, logistic regression models, they're choice models. But the, the key thing to think about is that if I have a Y and I have multiple independent variables, right, that's, that's, that's sort of what I've got in the choices that I'm given, right? And those multiple independent variables, the X's are sort of representing these different attributes. And what I'm trying to do is, for each individual person, I'm trying to put together a regression equation that would explain the set of choices you made when you went through the, that conjoint task. 
So I'm, I'm basically trying to come up with a beta weight for every individual uh, that would ex explain kind of what they value and the choices they're making. 